Okay, good morning. You can hear us uh, from Mount Sinai. Welcome, both Dr. Manoj and Rahul. Hi, sir. Good evening. Good, good. Good evening there. Good morning here. And we are ready to uh, show a very uh, case. Uh, more important is the difficult engagement of the right coronary artery, which is very anterior takeoff. And of course, has a multiple lesions. So that case we are going to show. Uh, with that note, if... Uh, uh, and uh, let's uh, start. Good. Uh, our complex coronary series uh, in association with the MediQuest and uh, Cath Lab of Mount Sinai. Uh, and uh, so this, these are our disclosures. And of course, both Manoj and Rahul uh, individually. Uh, the description. Manoj is the director we both got from Magnum Heart Institute, Nasik at present. Uh, and Manoj is the director of cardiology and uh, interventional cardiologist and uh, do a quite a bit of, uh, besides intervention, uh, charity and public service work. Uh, uh, and uh, Rahul, uh, our, you know, has been a fellow uh, in the past and a great, uh, I would say, budding interventionalist in India, uh, both uh, very well settled at Magnum Heart Institute. With that note, uh, goal today would be to show this case uh, of uh, multiple lesions in the RCA with anterior takeoff and then we'll see RCA CTO by robotic arm of the live in back case. So this is the case number 27. So we started this uh, journey uh, about more than two years now uh, and every month we have this presentation of a live case. Uh, this patient presented with class 4 angina and uh, had a negative EK changes and negative troponin. Uh, the risk factors on the left side, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, PAF and sport and myeloma and thyroiditis and syntax SAQ score was high because patient has almost rest angina uh, and uh, otherwise uh, things were okay uh, the, on good medications, clopidogrel, rivaroxaban, bisoprolol, added isosorbide, torvastatin, agentib and synthroid. So, three-vessel disease uh, angiogram was done uh, at that time and uh, two-vessel PCI was done, which will show and today is the RCA takeoff. So, Anu, you are ready to show. Uh, we welcome all from our Mount Sinai Cat Lab, a lot of uh, familiar faces along with uh, our two fellows, Richard and uh, Vishal. So, this is uh, a piece uh, from the left side, left main was okay, to 90% lesion, you can see the prox circ stand. Patent and then LAD also proximal she had lesion, but uh, distal LAD was diffusely diseased, which we did not plan to intervene even at that time. We have left it like that. Good. So EF is normal, EDP was okay. So this is where we are. So we always, I think, the teaching point is whenever you have a right coronary artery, you use a Judkins uh, catheter. This is when you're doing diagnostic. When you're there, you start a clock and. Uh, if it starts facing you, we say stop and take a picture. If uh, multiple uh, times you are try to engage and you still cannot get it, always try to take a picture to understand, uh, you know, uh, where the origin of the right coronary is. Most often is anterior. The others could be that it could be in the right sinus, but could be uh, slightly higher up, could be in the midline, way higher up, or could be from the left sinus. So we actually have a paper way back uh, saying various catheters that can be used uh, when the RCA origin uh, is uh, aberrant, not anomalous, but aberrant. So this is an aberrant origin. So if you see here, um, when, when you have anterior takeoff, if the normal JR catheter does not engage, the catheter of choice should be the 3D RC. We call it the 3D RC. Some people, you know, even... Uh, called not all 3d rc usually is a cordis uh, catheter and yeah. then when you are uh, doing the pci could be the same 3d rc catheter or could be the lima rarely you could probably use either ar or al.75 depending on the aortic route so here we are initially we tried 3d rc we were not able to engage it uh, we tried ar2 we were not able to engage it and then finally we were able to do it just with the lima uh, guide so if you go there so let and then we'll ask it yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this is the fluoro save how we we get there so this is the lima guide seven french lima guide and this is the here now yeah 
See that? Now, I know that the no torque uh, is available. 3D RC is available in India also. They actually have a right uh, uh, catheters too, right? Some for the anomalous, uh, the right coronary upper shepherd cook, uh, a crook type of uh, right coronary. Uh, so, Rahul and Manoj, what catheter would you use there? And we'll take a picture in the AP cranial now with the bifurcation. We have, we have. Yeah, we have it. Okay. Yeah. So, this is it here now. See, there is a disease. One, very unstable guide. So, clearly we know nowadays any of these guide issues, you use your guide extender, uh, whether Godzilla or uh, uh, guide liner will help you. So, lesion is in the mid. Then there is a bifurcation lesion distally. You see that? Uh, maybe we need to open a little better whether you need going to need a two stent approach or so. So, guys, uh, now tell uh, uh, Manoj and uh, Rahul what will be your approach in this case. Uh, do one stent uh, or uh, two stent. I think mid lesion has to be taken care. We can decide based on physiological. Angiographically looks significant. Only thing is this patient did not have any functional testing because patient came with a rest angina although with some inverted T waves in the infralateral area because very tight 90% circ lesion and these are the RCA lesion and of course 80% LAD. So left system has been taken care with the Promus Elite DS and now for the right coronary I think you still need to do a little better in the AP cranial. We give nitron or no? We give. Okay. So let's uh, identify. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. This too is a better much, view. Yeah. Too much. Too much. Okay. And then we talk about the approach in this uh, particular case. So since the guide was unstable, I just uh, free wired it. Yeah. So I think uh, I can show that also. So this yeah. is, uh, you see that, guide was unstable, free wired and then we are able to advance the guide and engage it. If you can keep watching, see that. Yeah. So, so clearly comes, uh, the question comes down that at what point you want to uh, use the guide liner or you are okay with the, uh, without it as see here. So I think if we are deciding the distal bifurcation, uh, of course you cannot put a two stents uh, uh, through the six, uh, so you could put through the seven French uh, with a Godzilla or guide liner, but there is definitely a distal plaque in the distal RCA, AV continuation, uh, and uh, AV continuation about 60 70, uh, distal RCA and PD about 80 percent, and mid RCA about uh, 60 70. I so, think now yeah. the guide is uh, well engaged into the RCA, we can just proceed without a uh, guide extension. Okay. Uh, and tell us now what, what will be your approach. Uh, guys, uh, any imaging you like to do or we just go directly with the, uh, our interventional approach now? I think uh, basically a distal RCA, as you said, 60 to 70% and PDA 80%, that needs to be tackled. And what I thought that the mid RCA looks borderline, should we do a FFR there or I Post. if we use it? Then yeah. No, I think that will be the good plan we were thinking also that once you take care of the distal, uh, lesions, I know a lot of people will do IFR and pull back, see that to, I'm, to me I think better is you take care of the tightest lesions first once you are right. taken care then you do your FFR and based on that you make a decision and that happens many times in the moderate left main moderate proximal lesion like this so that will be our goal that after we take care of the distal RCA uh, and then right. we will do the uh, FFR of the uh, mid uh, of the RCA to see if we need to put a stent in the mid RCA no, it's just, uh, it looks so significant. Here. No, but I know, but let's but do document. Remember, this is the case where we have no functional study. Therefore, it's reasonable to do it now. And wh what is the approach for the distal? That's another point. And do you tell us what you want to do and then we'll ask them. Yeah. The PLV is also big. Should we put another wire in the PLV? Yeah. And the, the balloon dilatation from the distal RCA to PDA and we put a stent across PDA. And the, if the PLV gets... Uh, 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 if the pinch is yeah. there, then we might recross it and uh, if we do a kissing balloon, if required. Yeah. So, question is, there's a, about 50% lesion, 50-60% lesion is already there in the PLV. Um, and uh, the, uh, likely it will go further. So, question comes down to it's a short lesion. Uh, that do you go with the two stent approach directly or you want to do a, a stent across and uh, bail out uh, if necessary? Uh, yeah. Provisional versus uh, two stent. I know what do you want to do. 
No, we can do provisional, but I think we need to predilate the AV continuation. Right. So the lesion is significant. We predilate it, and yeah. the provisional, uh, like you guys mentioned, from uh, RCA. So distal RCA is almost uh, 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 larger than three ves uh, three O vessel, and uh, PDA is two five. So we'll have to probably do a two five, and then distal we'll have to, uh, you know, do the post dilation with yeah. the larger. And the AV continuation, you want to do a cutting balloon, then 2.5 or 2.75? I think 2.75, no, it's a large yeah. vessel. Yeah, get a 2.75 uh, Wolverine. And um, the so actually... First, uh, let's dilate the distal RCA to PDA. Yeah. Right? What do you want there? That you, you can high pressure balloon. 2.5, 15. Actually, another good advantage now, yeah. It's a PD hostile lesion, that's why you want to use a cutting balloon or it's a just... Yeah, so yes. cutting balloon, yeah, cutting balloon. Yeah. Cutting so balloon because of uh, hostile lesion. Hostile lesion, absolutely. We always yeah. like to oh. use a cutting balloon in a non-IOTO hostile lesion also. Yeah. Okay. And that cutting balloon we can use at both places? It will be 2.75. Yeah, we said 2.75. You want to? Low pressure for the PDA and little good work for the AV can, uh, RPL. So, another important point that uh, we huh? want to uh, mention is that when cutting. you are planning a provisional strength, like here, cutting, cutting. always predilate the main branch first, which here is distal RCA to PDA and we are considering uh, AV continuation as a side branch. So, any plaque shift will happen now. Then, we will go and dilate the side branch and then after that, okay. we will uh, strength across. Yeah. from distal RCA to PDA. So, you want the cutting balloon for yeah, the right. PDA? Yeah, low pressure for the PDA and then little high pressure, the 2.75. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so key is a very important point. So, since we are thinking in this case, provisional stent. So, then your side branch dilatation has to be the step just before the stenting. So, a lot of people do side branch and main vessel with the balloon. You'll shift the plaque right there. So, question is, do the main vessel PTCA, cutting balloon, whatever. Then, do the side branch PTCA cutting balloon and then you put a stent across. So that should be the step just before stenting the main vessel. So right now we have 2.75 uh, Wolverine. Uh, go to a low pressure in the PDA here. Okay, go up. Yep. It's like we carry 6 millimeter only. Uh, if it's a 10 millimeter, we use yeah. a score flex. Uh, and uh, so, just to okay. say, we can keep 10 millimeter also, but uh, we keep only uh, 6 millimeter. So, to have a, a access to both the devices. Down. So, 6 millimeter uh, Wolverine uh, and uh, or flex stone, whatever it used to be. Uh, and now, we'll, the score flex we are using, and that is a 10 millimeter. And that is a little different than the angio sculpt, which we used to use before. Okay, we are ready to take a picture. Chennai. This was 2.75. Yeah. Looks good. But now we have to AV continuation. See that already getting a little, little bit pinched. So we'll pull back and but go there. You see that AV continuation as is. Yeah. The hmm? distal RCA already dissection just with 275. Yeah, which is okay. Yeah. No, so expect. 275 may be a large size even for AV. If no, there's no, no, a dissection, okay. then. Yeah. Okay, don't change the wire. Just go the. Like, Take the flex stone out and just go back again. Yeah, another good thing which happened is USA, we open NC, just introduced. So, it's available now and we'll be using it uh, uh, with the going with the high pressure. I know in India has been a very good, the double layer balloon going to 40 atmosphere. Uh, we have that balloon now, has been approved by FDA to be clinical use. We are not using it yet, but we'll be using it uh, uh, in, uh, you know, today and some other days. And then we'll be showing it in our future uh, live cases. Go, bring the same cutting balloon. Yeah. So, play. Uh, the dil now, I, you know, get a little cut is good. Actually, you want a little bit cut to see. So that basically means you are affected the plaque. And patient is an AFib, you can see the hemodynamics, yeah. No, I mean 275 will be too big for the AV. AV? Low pressure, no, but not 12, 4. 4. Yeah. And it's not a calcific lesion, it's a, it will be elastic, osteal PDA. But guide actually sitting very nicely now. 
Yeah, it's a really good yeah. support. Yes. Okay. Good. Four. Low pressure, four. Yeah. And the advantage of these high, the newer generation cutting balloons are that you can safely go up to 16 to 20 atmosphere. Uh, with the score flags and NGO sculpt, you can go to 24. But this is 16 to 18. Although the rated burst pressure is 12, but uh, easily we go all the time okay. combining. Okay, so what is the strength length we want? So let's see based on the AV continuation. Has AV continuation opened? If not, then you go with a two stent approach now. Looking very good. So this is the type of case actually. I would say next one or two years we'll be just doing the drug coated balloon for the AV continuation and stent across. But we don't have the drug coated balloon. There are two trials are just starting, will be part of one of them. They're starting with the ISR first. Then they go to the native vessel and side branch bifurcation lesions. So, but it, it opened up very nicely, as you can see, no dissection. And uh, we use a 2.75, I think 2.75, uh, 24. Mm. Your promus, because promus was done on the left side. What do you think? Yeah, 2.75, yeah, 24, and yeah. then uh, distal RCA will uh, post dilate with 3O. 3O, yes. Yes. 24 and then, is a good length? Yeah. Because we are four shortened here. You want 28? The question is length-wise. I think it always should be that you'd cover even the mild lesion right here. No, no. This is the one. Mm -hmm. This is the best way. Yeah, 24 will be okay. Yeah, 24. Mm -hmm. Keep it there. Yeah, 24. Now, when the... the what? No, we should get ready the FFR also because after deployment, if everything looks good, we'll do the FFR for the mid. And then we'll take the vote from our panelists. Huh? Yeah, I was we can do later. Yeah, that's also. I was we can do too. I was also can be done. I was is okay because not the OCT. I was for pre lesion assessment is a 2B that uh, lumen of uh, 3 millimeter square or uh, 4 millimeter. Uh, with a plaque burden of 50, 50% 50 and more plaque burden. So those are the two criteria basically are at present. In the past, we are just going with a 4-0, uh, 4 millimeter square, but uh, we found that uh, the what really correlate with the FFR of 0.8 is your 3 millimeter square or 4, but with a high plaque burden. So those were the trials, uh, the favor trials, and so made that as a criteria. Okay, now die. Yeah, some die. Good. Mm. Good, very good. Go up. Have a 3 balloon ready. 8 or 12? 3 or 12. Okay, now die. Okay, good, right? Yeah. Okay. Cover everything, yes. Mm -hmm. I think go back to same view. Yeah. Okay. Good. 10, 10. Yeah. 2, 7, 5. Down. Okay. Go up again. You want to go to same view or no? Okay. Down. So, this is a 2.75, 24 Promus Elite and we have gone with a 12 atmosphere. 16, 35. Okay, good. Take a picture now. Ready? Hmm. AV continuation actually looks good. Yeah. Yeah. So there are two approaches. Ideally, you should take the side branch wire out when before you post dilate. You have the three O now. Okay. FFR is ready. Yeah. Give me the post. Twelve. Mm. 
बोलना So I'm going to remove the side branch wire. Okay. Okay. Post here. So these are three O. Oh. Good. Go. Eighteen. Done. Post again here. Proximal edge a little bit more. Twenty here, okay. Go up. Eighteen, twenty. Okay, you want to do FFR? Ready? Okay, looks good. We are happy at the bifurcation, right? So we'll do the FFR for the mid. But you want to take a little better AP cranial picture because not a overlap, little nitro first. I think you need to show little bifurcation, more AP cranial view. We'll do it after the FFR now. Let's not take too many pictures. Okay. Yeah, I mean clearly we'll also learn by various trials now that routine kissing balloon inflation dilatation is not necessary, rather could be harmful, and uh, more so for the left main. And if the side branch is not involved and you do routine kissing balloon dilatation, on the XL trial with a three-year follow-up had a slightly higher stent thrombosis. Uh, if you put a stent uh, provisional stenting only, if you put two stents, then it's essential. Yeah. We give nitro, right? Mm. We have to give nitro before FFR, and you have to see little. Good. Have you taken the good picture or no? The epicranial picture has not been taken. Okay. So let's get the prediction, but we need to see the picture before predict whether it will be positive or not. I think uh, it might be negative. All right, let's see. Let me see the picture, then we'll predict. You know, we actually had a paper uh, in Euro intervention. Ah, uh, yeah, the way it looks like now definitely will be negative. Uh, we actually have a we uh, on one thousand plus cases lesion between forty to seventy percent, uh, and uh, predictor that which will have FFR positive. And FFR positive was in about 42% of cases. One of our fellow, uh, Nishtar Sarin, uh, in Euro intervention. And what were the predictors of uh, positivity was LAD, lesion length, and calcification. The degree whether it's a 50 or 70 didn't predict. It was LAD, lesion length more than 20 millimeter, and uh, calcification. Okay. Those were the three. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, let's hear now. FFR is on the line. Equalizing. I think it will be negative. Okay. You use interval. What did you do? Know. Yeah, no, 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 no. peripheral. IV, IV, IV. IV. What happened now? What did you do? I don't know. Why this guy's what flush, did? flush, flush? Huh? I don't know. They completely. When yeah, is equalizing, you cannot do it. Cannot be Pull back a little bit again, dude. No. No, one second. Yeah, yeah, good. Done. Now. Good. Okay. And now it's yeah. better. Yeah. So now it's good. Now going to go. By one by one, what? Okay, let's pull it back. No, pull back. Pull back in the guide a little bit and go again. Because yeah. We'll be done with stenting by now. <laughs> Equalize now. Good. Are you showing the FFR there? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's thin. No, not done yet. Thin. Everybody on a very fast paper speed. I mean, this is like today. Not a fast super speed. speed. One second. No, no. Are you a little too distal? 
No, Hopefully no, not no, beyond no, the legion. I'm, I'm there. Look at it. The guide almost. It's because of I think we uh, are of the AFib. No, it's not equalized yet. AFib basis. And we can ask our uh, 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 any uh, with the in the chat box people can ask the question or maybe predict. Let's see what they want to say. Good, done. Okay, finally did it. Now go. No, no, go into the PDA. And I said, but the I, SS, the problem is, yeah, we have a stent there now. Yeah, that's good. You want to go in the PDA through that? Yeah. Few people in the audience are going for a positive FFR. Wow. Actually, Dr. Keeney feels, Anu also feels that it will be positive. I think it will be negative. But let's see. It will be negative, I think. No, go <laughs> distal. Go distal. No, please. That's not the You want to make it positive? You have to go a little distal more. Are you teaching them? In the PDA, what? You remember, I always say, when you are, you have to cover the entire area of the myocardium. So you need to put a wire into the distal segment uh, because if you put a half, so it will just measure until there. Yeah, now it's okay. But you keep it straight. Good. That's it, that's it. Now you want to remove your other wire? Good. Leave it. You remove your no, existing I'm wire. wire. I'm not taking that wire off. Huh? No. Okay. Go, go, start. Yeah. Once it baseline of 0.92, there's a very good chance. Make a, Start with a double dose. So many times when we think uh, it's a high chances, we give a, not a 140, 180 microgram per kilogram per minute. So that basically means that you increase the patient weight by 30%. 100 kilo make it 130 and therefore it will be, the dose will be calculated simply. And make sure the guide is disconnected, mm -hmm. I mean disengaged. No, yeah, we can't do that. No, this no. one you have to disengage, the, then only it will become positive. So guide has to be disengaged, wire has to be distal. <clears throat> okay, one second. 8.2, lowest went down to 8.2. Okay, it looks like it'll stabilize at 8280. Eight eight zero. Zero. Okay, stop it. Good. Done. No, no, no. No, 80. No, what are you teaching? Yeah. No, you need to put a stent anyway. Yeah. yeah. Went down to 8. Remember, it's a different uh, beats, but uh, lowest, you need to take in the lowest one, which is 0 0.80. Yeah, right there, 0 0.80. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, let's do this one direct stenting or what do you want to do? Yeah, direct stent now. Okay, direct stent 3.5, uh, 28 or 32. Yep, good. And proximally becomes one. Yeah. Very good. So that's a good assessment. Uh, so I would say that uh, the audience and of course uh, some are correct. Uh, I, my prediction was not correct in this particular case. I thought it will be negative, but yeah, I think the lesion length. Definitely will mix it and uh, this midwest lesion. Yeah. So we also learned that post FFR, lot of trials still ongoing. It's not of uh, any clear cut. Uh, it doesn't help much. 32. Yeah, 32 is okay. 32 is all right. 32, long yeah, one. Yeah. Right? That's fine. All yes. this 28. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It looks 28, but then. Huh? You want to take a little better picture now? Okay. Yeah. Good. So question this year. Mm -mm. Okay, ready. Go. Yeah. There's a little distal disease. We don't worry about this. No, I think 28 will be okay. You. 28. Yeah, 3.5, 28 promise. 28. Elite, yeah. Yeah, both promise and synergy are available in India freely. And, and uh, mid RCA, you want Ivers or no? 
In the end, you want to just complete with the iOS since we have it. That's fine. Optimization. Uh, okay. No, tell me in uh, the which one on your Magnum Hospital, which is the uh, most common stent you are using there? Uh, it's a Onyx Expedition and the okay. Indian stents uh, lineage. Yeah. What about uh, Miras 100, our biodegradable from Merrill? Yes, yes, that's what we are using that stent. Yes. Uh, Professor, I think sir is one of the highest uh, uh, usage with uh, Miras 100. Ah, very good. Okay, now die. I think we did definitely a need for uh, nice. the bioabsorbable stents, and particularly with Miras 100 is performing so well. Good. Right, Apple. Yep. Back, uh, yeah. It's a good stand in the... Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Go up. Yeah. I did the... Of the first uh, 105 cases, 104 they presented, uh, like first 6-7, uh, uh, in okay. the first 10 group, I did with the OCT and uh, very post, huh? uh, happy, you know, uh, performance of that uh, stand. Really nice deliverability. Uh, of course, only issue remains that down. if there was a very tight down, lesion... Down, right? Uh, there was little residual 5-10% even after post dilatation, uh, mild, even yeah, mildly calcified. Uh, yeah. Vessel preparation becomes uh, very important. Basically, yeah. hybrotic lesions, I think the scoring Ready? balloon you say should be more in those patients where we yeah. want to use a biopsorbable stage. Yeah. Yeah. And post, hold on. Looks okay. Good. No, the right here. You may have to post. Okay. All right. 3712? Or 375. 37515. And then we do IVAS. Yeah. You want to go back to same epicranial view? No, no, no. For what? The PDA. You're not going to IVAS the PDA. No, no, okay. not IVAS yet. Let me post. Yeah. Open. Yeah. Right now we are post dilating the mid uh, just after that RV branch. There's a little bit lesion. Actually, Dr. Samin, actually in 2003, I was with you for one month as a fellow there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Always, yes. And Rahul was when? Rahul, you were? 2000, year uh, 2020, sir. Three years back. Yeah. Dr. Satyavan, sir, had sent me, sir. Yes, no. absolutely. Good. Now, I know that you are with both uh, Dr. Goel and Dr. Satyavan Sharma, the legendary Dr. Goel. Yes. How can you use the word that he did fellowship here? Yeah, good. Go up. Maybe just for a few months. Yeah, good. Okay, okay, down. Okay, go up. Yeah. 14. Good. Oh. Down. Pain. I was ready. Pain. Good. I was. Yeah. How long were you here uh, when you were in Mount Sinai? Rahul. I was there for Rahul Haj. No, yeah, Dr. Manoj was there for one month, right? Uh, I was there for one month. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, the, then the, uh, both have written, Rahul. right? Rahul, yeah. Rahul, you were for how long were you were here? Yeah. I was there for two and a half months, sir. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I thought about three months. Yes, good. So we are just doing the IVAS now to complete it. You want to just see the features of them? Your yeah. MCS aid? No, that's a lesion there. That's a lesion. No, 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 that's okay. 
Let's select. Yeah, here. Good. Okay. Okay, start. Okay, check the image. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Okay, start to work. It's coming. It's a healthy native vessel with RCA. It's coming. Yeah, Kiski on yeah, imaging yeah, front. Yeah, looks perfect. Well expanded. No yeah. mala position. Yeah, well expanded. <laughs> like 3.5. Opposed yeah. and expanded, yeah. both. Kind of chunk of calcium outside, but stent is expanded. Looks good. Steering the stand, some small branch. There was some calcium in this. Angiographically, we didn't feel at all. Yeah. Mm. During the stand. Yeah. yeah. Proximal good. edge. Yeah. yeah. Proximal looks good, edge, right? Yeah. 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 Normal opposition. Looks good. no major dissection. Okay. Yeah. Come to the guide. I'll stop. Take that out, epithelial. Yeah. Can check the area. We have to kill a few more minutes area. somehow. Okay. Whatever you want we to can, show. We uh, can, Andrew, get us the new MCS aid quickly. Whatever number of. Is Andrew there? He listens. Okay. And to yeah. give nitro. No, give a little nitro. The first. device and uh, probably. Yeah, MSA is 8.0. Oh, okay. okay. Hands by your side, dear. You have to do one hour? Yeah. One hour? Yeah, yeah. Ten minutes. At least kill ten more minutes. Yeah. Okay, okay. good. Ready? Yeah. Good. Okay, good. Very good. Look at the AV continuation remain. So, clearly, what we say that your bailout uh, stenting when your uh, provisional stent group should be less than 5% and identify lesions which you know going to get a stent in the side branch and those we all learn Close. very tight lesion a more than 80-90% calcific and of course lesion length so those are the three important features and uh, angulation people talk about that has been plus minus in the literature but the key is that you need to have know and I can tell you, our lab, we go quite a bit with a two-stent strategy and that lot of data now, the two stents is quite well. They do very well. But the key is that once we decided with a provisional, the side branch stent is in less than 5% of cases. And we follow all those patients, uh, you know, in our international database group. So key remains is that the need to identify, it should not be that it's a one stent or two stent approach. The approach should be that like definition two criteria. The, those who are lesion length and so uh, based on those criteria that those cases go with the two stent approach. This case has a short lesion, not angulated and it was about 60%. So all features where you don't need to put a second stent. So therefore, we went with a single stent approach. Although initially we thought uh, that we'll go with a two stent approach whether after the diagnostic, that's why we got a seven French guide. But uh, after taking the pictures today, it became very clear it was a very short lesion uh, and uh, non-calcified, no angulation was uh, reasonable. I would say what is the reasonable angle between 45 to 90? So that is, is a good, your landings, uh, you know, good so that you have a nice balloon dilatation. Uh, and um, this, uh, that is what came out. Then do you do a routine, um, the kissing balloon dilatation answer that we have had become very clear that not necessary, rather maybe harmful. Uh, but, but definitely all the randomized trial has shown that it is of no benefit. The lastly question remains still that do you leave the wire in the side branch? So you saw that about six months ago there was a paper uh, in uh, Jack intervention uh, from various trials uh, uh, and uh, basically that leaving the side branch uh, versus non-side branch meta-analysis and basically showed that uh, side branch occlusion was not different whether you use a side wire or not, we leave the wire or not wire, but only advantage was retrieval of the side branch. So you got back with that multi three flow uh, if you left the wire in the side branch. So means it's easier to go back and get the branch dilated once you have to intervene because there was a decreased flow or, or branch got occluded. So some people will leave routinely the wire. Some people would not leave the wire. And I think some of the small trials are looking into it that is there any advantage uh, of jailing the side branch versus you take it out. Uh, but clearly the jailing the side branch wire had been fine. You don't jail it once you're putting a two stands. Uh, you do it. 
in the provisional stent approach routinely some people don't believe it some people are very strongly i am on the strong side that i always will leave the branch and the wire in the side branch um, and so so with that note uh, we need to hear some questions your comments from both of you uh, manoj and rahul uh, tell us on this particular case an approach of this kind of a lesion with anomalous uh, uh, not anomalous anterior take off of the right coronary artery i think the 3d catheter what we used in this case good sir uh, becomes a good option for analyzing this uh, type of rcs uh, and the bifurcation lesion what strategy we used usually i also like to use a provisional stenting dilate the both lesions and then put up a stent in the vessel where there is a significant stenosis that's what we did distal rca to pd and as the mid rca lesion was borderline we thought that the FFR will help us in deciding, and I think it came positive. And uh, post I was uh, post dilatation of the stent, and then I was showed that very good apposition. I think the combination of hemodynamics plus imaging and getting a good result was a thing. And uh, started with a cannulation of the RCA, uh, two wires in the bifurcation, and uh, removing or not removing the wire while gelling. I think Dr. Kini removed it and then did a post stent dilatation. And uh, you, you said, Dr. Samin, that you try to gel the wire when yeah. you are post-stain yeah. dilating. I yeah. think that uh, is the individual approach. And I think it was a really good, nice uh, points which we could take from this case. And it was a good demonstration of uh, two uh, lesions. Yeah, post-dilating, you don't leave the wire in the yeah. side branch. And uh, right. the other question no, is uh, anyone uh, from the… We need to correct that. If you want to post-dilate and you think the side branch is going to compromise, you need to remove and recross re into the side yeah. branch. Yeah. yeah, you cannot leave yeah, it behind. Right. Yeah, you have to recross. Yeah. yeah. So key is that uh, if uh, I let's say I put left the wire in the side branch, we put a stent across. It looks good. We remove the wire of the side branch. Everything fine. Now if I'm post dilating, then I b b always try to go back and still save the branch with the now recross with the stent starts and leave the wire not you're not doing the kissing balloon inflation just rewiring if you're going to the high pressure post dilatation and any questions from our chat box uh, from our audience so you want to share something the question is yeah. from uh, mr kaushik Ted. yes is uh, asking that uh, whether in atrial fibrillation which is present in this case whether bit to bit variation may affect the results of ffr and uh, what is the solution for such cases? Yeah. yeah, very good question. So question is, we saw that. Remember some beats are 0 0.80, some are 0 0.82 and 84. So that always will be the issue in the atrial fibrillation. So we know in the LV gradient, LV aortic gradient. So you kind of uh, see the steady state. And particularly, we always take the lowest number. So once it the, with the gradient, you take the highest number. With the FFR, IFR, you take the lowest number. Once it touch 0 0.80, and we know that most of the beats were 0 0.80, so you take that. But you're right. The atrial fibrillation with the rate uh, is a very uh, tricky situation. But key, this was the one case, I think, if you really think about, uh, it was nothing wrong in this case. Just go with the stent directly, uh, even without the FFR. Now, particularly, we always want to do it if there is no uh, no steady, uh, you know, no functional studies there. But there was a clear-cut lesion. Uh, if you can go back to here, you can see there. That was about 20 millimeter long, 60-70% uh, lesion in a large vessel non calcific it was just in our by our criteria was just at the border will be positive or not so i think the threshold here was definitely lower uh, for us to stent uh, versus not to stent so that as soon as we got to the 0 0.80 in few beats we took it but yes uh, atrial fibrillation will always be the issue there is no clear answer that what do you do so i think more important like kind of a steady state what your most of the beats are and uh now the patient has atrial fibrillation, dual antiplatelet with anticoagulation. Yeah. Uh, what is your strategy? Yes, yeah, so very. Well, the last time before patient came in was only taking Zeralto, Rivaroxaban, 20 milligram. So we also did the uh, Pioneer A5 trial, and the best combination was 15 milligram of uh, Rivaroxaban along with clopidogrel. Other agents should be avoided along with these NOACs. 
so so big our this patient now has been on clopidogrel and uh, rivaroxaban 15 mg some people will put aliquis they like it uh, quite a bit uh, and that is okay also uh, but uh, but we uh, we think with the pci we, our usual strategy is rivaroxaban 15 mg plus clopidogrel 75 mg daily if patient has a high bleeding risk we go 10 mg rivaroxaban so rarely we'll give a 20 like obese patient i think you can do a 20 but otherwise uh, the 15 plus 75 is very good now dr keeney actually have brought uh, uh, some of those educational apps uh, which is more than 70000 downloads so far and yeah so if you see uh, device aid uh, last bus one the new re uh, released is mcs which was just 2 weeks ago which is mechanical circulatory support so this app is all about uh, who should be getting the mechanical circulatory support. So we have uh, uh, divided them into two groups, one in the setting of acute MI, two in the acute of non-acute MI. Um, and the third will be even when you do that, then how do you wean them off? And then very important is that this uh, app also has a calculator by itself to give you the calculation of the entire uh, uh, various uh, you know parameters that you need when they are on uh, this uh, most often we use here is a uh, ECMO ECMO um, when is the time and how what kind of because we, you have to do half hourly measurements uh, in this sick patients so we have a calculator you can directly go to the calculator and uh, just uh, check that uh, but more important is a guide to which patient should be getting what ca kind of uh, mechanical circulatory support. That is a new release called uh, uh, MCS-8. And you know all these apps that we do um, are free to be downloaded both. And we also have a website of that uh, to be downloaded either from uh, the App Store or uh, the Google Store. So the device aid actually will be coming soon the app will be coming soon but the the uh, what i meant was the website is ready so what is device aid like here we mentioned four or five guide catheters there are various guide catheters and other devices that are used in the cath lab starting from the sheath insertion wire i mean uh, the uh, wires uh, then the guides uh, balloons stands uh, all the other devices so it will be very good not only for physicians also for the cath lab personnel which will be technicians and nurses to understand what it is uh, so this is a device aid the app will be should be coming out in the next couple of months we are updating the calcificate um, it, the, uh, the first version came years ago before IVL balloon was available so uh, with the now that we are going to update it uh, adding IVL uh, balloon and bifurcate which was our original that was released uh, way back uh, will be also updated uh, with uh, some newer um, you know edition because a lot of publications keep coming up and we have to keep uh, updating whatever uh, uh, is there uh, out in the scientific literature i was uh, now after we did the oct there was a lot of demand that we should have another app just to understand IVAS. So that will be released, I think, in the next month. Uh, essentially, all kind of simp uh, you know, various uh, IVAS uh, uh, pictures, then uh, quiz as well as cases to understand uh, I, uh, how does uh, uh, the plaque look and uh, how to analyze uh, each plaque and the lesion. So more important is also the uh, quiz involved in this. Uh, the further one release will be Anjo 3D. That is uh, more so for the fellows to understand uh, um, when they're doing angiogram, you know, movement of the table, uh, various various views. It's more of a gaming app uh, we are, because we are going to the next level of a 3D game with that. Uh, that we are starting just with Anjo 3D, but uh, the future will be even to teach. I think um, uh, how you can do bifurcation intervention uh, using uh, this app. Yeah. And the, you want to show a little more, more detail of the MCS aid? Can we show a little bit or no? <laughs> so, so basically, it's a very good point is you want to calculate your PAPI, cardiac index, uh, uh, the, you know, M, the cardiac output, everything is there. So within, and the very important is device aid. All devices which are available, wire, guide catheter, balloons, everything has been incorporated in there along with the guide wires. Uh, 
aid. So many of them, very educational, which are not usually available in the regular textbook, had been uh, made available through this uh, educational uh, free uh, download uh, apps uh, for better understanding of uh, our interventional cardiology armamentarium. Yeah. Any questions? So we are done with that. Closure done. Yeah, so Good. Let me show you total contrast was uh, 130 fluoro time 15 minutes with the air karma of 0 0.7. So with this in this case. Okay. Okay, with that note, uh, we conclude our this morning's uh, uh, presentation uh, for uh, uh, for this uh, episode 27, MediQuest uh, Live. And if it's okay with you, uh, unless there is any other question on the uh, chat or so, we conclude and we thank everyone from the uh, Mount Sinai Cat Lab. And uh, you start your case presentation. And I'll join you in a few minutes. Uh, so, Raul and uh, Manoj, any other question we left uh, unanswered or we are okay with everything? I think we have covered everything. That was good. good. Okay. Then we'll see you shortly. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.